Hey, well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's presentation. My name is Sue Staniforth, and I'm the Education Manager with the Invasive Species Council of BC. I'm happy to join you today from the unceded and traditional territories of the Comox peoples, Comox First Nations in beautiful Merville, BC on the island. Um, today's webinar is entitled Be Invasive Wise, Engaging Ways to Educate Students on Aquatic Invasive Species. I'm sure we've all been on Zoom probably more than we'd like these past months, so nice. but I'll give you a couple of <laughs> reminders. Are they, yeah. Are they doing it again tomorrow? No, they're doing uh, it now. Well, like, there's nothing news. We, um, <laughs> I know there's lots of, lots of uh, activity as people coming in, which is great. Um, we recommend using the button up in the top right corner of your screen to change your view to speaker view so you can see our presenters at all time. If you're having any technical problems, please write us a note in the chat box. Our amazing tech support guru, Brittany, is ready backstage to help you with any uh, tech issues. And choose everyone in the chat box um, a selection so we can all see your questions. Um, if you joined us before, you can see we're having a bit of a different uh, type of workshop. You can, uh, we can see you all, hopefully. You're able to be on camera. We're really happy to have this technology today because I think it allows the, uh, the feeling of the workshop to be more interactive and um, engaging. The webinar is being recorded, um, but I'd encourage you through the presentation to have your camera on and to mute yourself. There may be time to uh, have questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, we'll probably use the chat box if there's quite a number of questions, but there may be um, opportunities to unmute and ask us questions directly as well. To begin with, we'd love to find out a bit about you, our attendees. Please type in your name and your location in the chat box while we're getting started. And uh, I'm going to turn it in over to Stephanie and Jen, our great presenters, to get us started. Great. Welcome, everybody. You're welcome to put on your cameras so we can pretend we're all in the room together if you would like to. I'm just going to um, share my screen. And uh, we'll get started here. So um, there we go. Does that look okay? It's good, Sue. I see you. Is it thumbs great. up? Great. It's okay, great. 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 So um, this is our, our title today. So engaging ways to educate students on aquatic invasive species. And um, I'm going to let Jen introduce herself first, and then I will I will take over. Okay. Are you there, Jen? Am. Just, oh, there you <laughs> are. There we all go. There I am. So yes, I'm coming to you from the Wet'suwet'en and First Nation lands up here in uh, Northwest BC near the town of Smithers, where I've lived here for over 20 years doing many um, roles of, as an environmental educator and doing environmental protection work. And so now I'm quite pleased to join you uh, as the education facilitator on invasive species and to work directly with you on how to have engaging activities and lessons incorporated into your teaching plans and to connect you with the local species, local uh, uh, community of invasive species experts where you are coming from. Over to you, great. Steph. Okay, great, thanks. So. Um, a little bit about me. I'm Stephanie Weinstein and I'm the education lead at the council where I'm developing our education program offerings. And, and my background is in biology and conservation. And for the fast, past 15 years, I've been focusing on environmental education. And I just love working with teachers and people of all ages to get them excited about, uh, to learn about and care for biodiversity. And uh, I gratefully acknowledge that I live on the traditional territory of the Lekwungen peoples. Um, the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations who have cared for these lands and waters for time immemorial. And Lekwungen actually means the place to smoke herring, um, now known as Victoria. And I, I truly hope that someday there will once again be abundant herring in these waters to support people and all the diversity of life that depends on these amazing fish. 
So um, some of you may already know a little bit about us, but our mission at the Invasive Species Council of BC is to take action to build healthy landscapes, habitats, and communities through education and responsible practices to prevent the spread of invasive species. And partnerships are really key to achieving our mission, and we work collaboratively with many groups, including governments, industry, regional invasive species organizations, Indigenous communities, youth, and educators, like some of you here with us today, across BC and and uh, even across Canada and internationally. Um, so that's a little bit about us. And what I would like to do now is have a poll um, to get a chance to, um, to see um, who's here with us today and what is your connection to invasive species and education. So, oh, I have to, hmm, okay. How do I relaunch the poll? Hmm. See the it. poll has there. ended. Is it's it there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Are you able to answer it? <laughs> I think it's because I had used it before. Uh, so it just says that it was an old poll, but you're able to. No, mine says poll ended. Yeah. Hang on. Oh, relaunch. Here we go. Okay. Now you should be able to answer it. Great. And if, if nothing applies to you, just let us know in the chat. We're, um, I was looking at the registration emails and it wasn't um, really clear to me that we had very many people, uh, school district teachers from BC. But it looks like we've got a nice diversity of people. I'll wait um, a couple more minutes. We've got, or maybe 15 more seconds, we'll get some people. Most people have answered. countdown. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. So it looks like we have, um, yeah, some non-formal educators and some people working for other um, Invasive Species Council or maybe from the Invas from ISCBC and one teacher. So welcome to everybody. Um, I can't really see the chat, but I see that it's active. So um, so I'm curious to, to know about uh, where you, all your connections, but I'm um, so glad to have all of you here with us today. Mm. All right, so moving on. So today we're focusing on aquatic invasive species. We've got a short time with you today and we're, we're gonna be giving you some general background on aquatic invasives. So not uh, a lot of real specific, cause this is really a, a workshop to focus on educational resources and activities that you can share with um, the educators in your lives or yourselves. And we also want to share with you our InvasiveWise education program and how you can join. So launching straight into our InvasiveWise education program, uh, we really want to support you and students in meaningful learning that connects them to nature and empowers them to help protect it. We have many resources available on our website, including curriculum-based lessons, videos. We have more and more available now in French that we're developing um, and things that can be done whether in the classroom or in the schoolyard. But what makes our program really stand out is that we have our education facilitator, which is Jen here with us today, who will be personally connecting with you and um, the teachers who sign up to customize a path through the resources based on your interests, help you to plan stewardship projects or connect you to resources and groups in your local area. Uh, we will be offering virtual class visits to connect your students to connect with your students. And we ha also have some bonus educational resources to send to participating classes. And so we really encourage you to sign up. We've got a link here. We'll, um, we won't be sharing too many links in the chat, but we have follow-up links for you um, that we'll send to all participants that have everything that we're sharing. So you could just sit back and you don't have to write anything frantically down. So this may be a real review for you, but it's really important for students to appreciate um, that in order to understand what's invasive, we need to know what is native. A native species is one that is naturally occurring in an area that has lived and evolved in the ecosystem over many, many years, thousands of years. So it's adapted to local conditions, including climate, predators, parasites, and diseases. A non-native species, sometimes called an exotic or introduced species, isn't necessarily invasive. 
So many of our important foods and ornamental plants are not native, but wouldn't be able to grow and thrive without help from people. And this goes for animals as well. So many introduced species wouldn't survive our climate if they were released, such as a tropical fish like this piranha, which uh, unbelievably was found by a uh, surprise fisherman in um, Nanaimo at Westwood Lake. Um, they think that it was a released pet and uh, this fish would not have survived the winter or we hope it would not have. Um, yeah, so this is, definitely not a legal thing to do is put your piranhas in the water. In contrast, if that introduced species happened to survive and spread, it could become invasive. So by definition, invasive species are non-native organisms that cause social, economic, or environmental harm. And invasive species have characteristics that allow them to spread and rapidly take over having these huge impacts. So the first one I just showed you, the reveal, early, which is high reproductive rates. So that's, that's one of the main characteristics. So for example, the zebra and quagga mussels um, that have caused so much um, harm in the Great Lakes, um, and they're thankfully not in BC due to uh, mussel monitoring efforts and boat inspection sta stations that have prevented and intercepted them from entering um, BC's waters. So a single mussel could produce a million eggs per year. And one purple loof strife plant can produce over 2 million seeds in a growing season. So another characteristic of invasive species is they spread easily. So like this picture of um, yellow flag iris, it has seeds that float in the water. So they're able to disperse along waterways to new locations and can also form new plants through horizontal roots and even broken root fragments. And they quickly establish and thrive, displacing native species. So invasive plants often bloom earlier and grow faster than native species. And this American bullfrog, it's larger than our native frogs and eats everything that can fit in its mouth, even small birds and mammals. And they also don't have the predators, pathogens and parasites that they evolved with in their native ranges. So their populations aren't kept in check. So why does it matter? Well, you're all here with us today. I'm sure you have a feeling of why this matters, but um, it's really important to connect this to students. Um, so water is, is life. We can't survive without it. And BC has incredible biodiversity and precious aquatic resources. And invasive species are the second greatest threat to biodiversity after habitat loss. And they impact every one of us, whether it's through reduced recreational opportunities, damaged ecosystems, loss of culturally important species uh, or increased costs. And the economic costs of invasive species are enormous, um, estimated to be $30 billion per year in Canada. So um, I'm curious to hear from, from you. Please feel free to share in the chat um, your interests around aquatic invasive species. Um, this will really help, your input helps us to, to shape and expand our education programs. So if there's certain uh, things that, that you're interested in finding resources about, maybe we can help produce something. Um, so, and in the meantime, I'm going to share with you um, some pictures of aquatic invasive species, most of which are known from BC. So here's our, just a photo gallery. Um, curious to know if any of these look familiar to you, if there's anything that surprises you here. Um, it's just a very small glimpse of some invasive animals and plants that can have serious impacts on aquatic habitats. Uh, some are found across BC, others are limited in distribution to certain areas and priorities to prevent their spread, such as the Phragmites, the European green crab is just um, starting to move north from um, in the waters around the Salish Sea. And the rusty crayfish and yellow floating heart are not yet in BC, and we really hope to keep it that way. So it's really important that people have their eyes on in the waters and on the grounds and to report anything that's unusual that they see. So I encourage you to check out our website to learn more about these and other invasive species and um, in our identify area. And also the second link to our networks um, it has links to regional invasive species organizations who are the on the ground experts across the province and in your, in your um, region, so near you. You can find out what the priorities are. 
A great way for students to learn more about aquatic invasive species and their identifying features is from our coloring pages. And this is just an, some examples of some created by some of our talented youth volunteers. Uh, students could also make an unwanted poster. These um, templates will soon be on our website. Um, we have it in French and in English, so they could do research on a certain species and their impacts, like this, um, the zebra mussel, which not only causes ecological damages, it can also make beaches unusual, unusable due to its uh, sharp shells. And the Hagondin, the French uh, version of this poster, that's uh, the French word for nutria or koipu, which is, uh, was introduced to BC from its native range in South America for its fur, for the fur trade. And it's become invasive in parts of the Fraser Valley and Southern Vancouver Island where it digs lots of burrows impacting agricultural areas. And it, it's an herbivore and it eats uh, so much um, vegetation that it can turn a wetland into like an open water pond. And how do invasive species impact aquatic habitats? So that last activity gives some ways that students can learn that. And we also have an activity that's uh, comparing and contrasting images or and photographs of habitats with and without invasive species. So just uh, what do you notice the differences between these two drawings, the healthy habitat above and the one below? welcome you to put your observations in the chat put yourself in your students frame of mind um so i notice that there's a decrease in biodiversity the bottom one is dominated by one species of fish it looks like there's changes in vegetation um and uh and water quality has changed so this even can get into understanding e ecosystem changes that can be affected by introducing an invasive species. So um, it can affect nutrient cycling and how water flows through a system. Um, there's more shade, there's less oxygen often. So lots of different changes that could be noticed and discussed. And I really wanna emphasize that you don't have to be an expert on invasive species. We provide in these activities, all the background information that a teacher would need in order to be able to share these activities with students. Here's another example from of a pair of photographs from the habitat hit activity. And the lake on the right has been taken over by Eurasian watermill foil, which grows in such a dense mat that you can see it from the surface of the water. So you wonder what's happening underneath the water. It can make it um, really difficult for other plants and animals to live there and decreasing water flows. And when it decomposes, it severely reduces dissolved oxygen content which impacts native fish and other aquatic life. And it's also a hazard for b swimmers and boaters that can get tangled up in it compared to the one on the left, which is, you know, looks pretty beautiful. Students can also learn about potential impacts um, in an extension from this habitat hit activity where they do an art project and portray the amazing diversity of life in a habitat. So in this case, a marine ecosystem and then using a stencil of an invasive species that could impact that habitat. So in this case, a European green crab. And then they draw it, the stencil over top of their image on top of a transparency or a plastic sheet protector to consider what is at stake, what could be lost. But the great thing is you can take your habitat out from underneath, make it uh, and talk about how um, we might prevent this invasive species from arriving and management efforts. So how did these invasive species get here in the first place? So um, in short, by us and our activities on and in the water. And once introduced, aquatic invasive species are extremely difficult to eradicate so preventing their introduction and spread is key. We have a great video series of kids asking questions that tell about the simple actions that we can do to prevent the spread of invasive species. And I will just share one of them with you here. So let's see. Um, Jan, I can see you. So give me a thumbs up if you can hear it. Hi, my name is Jackson. I'm 11 years old. Good. And my question is, I have a goldfish that would love to live in the pond at the park. Why is it bad to release pets into the wild? That's such a great question. And yes, there are absolutely invasive fish in BC. And the big problem that we're seeing are that people are releasing their goldfish into a lake, thinking that it might be a nice place for them to live. 
but unfortunately goldfish grow to be about this big in a lake. That is a huge goldfish. It only takes one goldfish to repopulate an entire lake. And next thing you know, they're eating all the food and they're out competing all of the native fish that your dad probably likes to fish for. If you've got a fish at home that you can't take care of, please don't release it into the wild. Take it back to the pet store. Just don't let it loose. Hi. There we go. So here's our pet goldfish and what it can become if it's released or flushed. They get huge and outcompete native fish for food and space. They can also spread diseases. The way they feed is they pull up plants and they put sediment in their mouth and they spit it out. So they stir up the sediment and they reduce water quality and release nutrients that can cause harmful algal blooms. They can live in really low oxygen conditions. So they can become a huge problem. I just read an article today about 20,000 goldfish found in a small sewage pond um, outside of Toronto. So um, Jennifer will be speaking more about some activities around don't let it loose. Um, another important way we can all prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species is to practice clean, drain, and dry. So to be sure to inspect and remove all aquatic plants and debris from your boat and equipment before leaving the area. So we want to prevent this water mill foil or whatever pondweeds these are from going anywhere else. And um, oops, there we go. And uh, and here's. Um, to reinforce the order, oh, that's our, uh, another sh uh, coloring sheet to show what um, what we're trying to protect. And, and also to reinforce the order and steps of how we practice clean, drain, dry, students can do this activity from the Invasive Species in Our Waters activity book made in partnership with the Canadian Council on Invasive Species. And this is available in French and English. So there we go. I'm going to pass it over to to Jen now and I will stop sharing. Okay, yeah, thanks Steph. Well, I'm going to um, take you guys on a bit of more of a tour of all the great educational resources we have at the Invasive Species Council, sort of virtual armchair tour here. So I'm going to share my screen. And um, this is the, my capacity as your education facilitator is to um, help you navigate all these re resources and uh, work with you on creating um, lesson plans to uh, integrate them with your teaching plans. And, and like Steph said, we're gonna send you an email after this presentation with all the links so, uh, to the activities that we're, we're breezing through here. So you can, um, yeah, have an easy way to, to get back to them after our presentation. So this is, I'm gonna share my sound too. Um, yeah, I'm going to share my sound because the first thing I want to bring you to, well, here's our homepage for the Invasive Species Council. And um, right at the top of our web page, we have our banner that includes all our little icons of social media. And that little one there is the YouTube. So this is where I wanted to bring you first to show you where you can see the, uh, the playlist of the kids' questions. We just saw that great video. Um, and I'll, this is where you can find it. So playlist is a key a key link to get to. And right here we have the first one is the series of kids questions. So you'll see there are um, about seven here, all less than a minute. And we find these are really uh, engaging for students, sort of the peer to peer communications um, helps bring the messages home. So here's the one where we saw, we just saw Jackson wanting to figure out why he couldn't let his goldfish free. Uh, there's one here about what is a boat inspection station that's it's catered to to young people too. So those are those are really good tools uh, to introduce the topics of aquatics, invasive species, and then also on our YouTube list of videos, we have a clean drain dry playlist. And clean drain dry, like Steph alluded to, is a play your part sort of action campaign. And I think that's important for students to feel they're part of something bigger going on and that they're part of like this, this um, action uh, suite of videos that are geared to the public at large, but we have a few that are quite good for students. Um, so you can see here with the super power image, there's a two, a, a two minute and 30 second version. And I'm gonna show you the 30 second version now just to give you a flavor of it and for our viewing pleasure. Oh, I get the ad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, here we go. 
But we should make sure to remind our parents to clean, drain, dry. Looks like a job yeah. for Captain Splash! You don't need to worry about us. We can handle this. But how? Simple. Once you're at the water, clean off your boat. The next step is to drain all the water from your boat. The final step, dry everything completely before heading into a different body of water. I'm off to help others in need. Farewell. Clean. Drain. Dry. Easy to remember. There we go. Are you a paddler? There we go. So there's... um. Yeah, there's a nice little taste of some of our YouTube videos and we have lots more on helping to identify species. Um, also on our website, then under take action, which is important, like I just talked about, is the uh, play your part high, uh, highlighted here with the different logos of all our sort of behavior change campaigns. And there's the clean drain dry if you wanted to get into uh, some more information on that. And also we have one specifically called don't let it loose, like we talked about. And there we go, there's our goldfish again. And, uh, and on this page, uh, there's even a video, which is great for students as well, about how to choose a pet. So that's, uh, that might be another useful tool uh, in your video um, closet <laughs> drawer. And on this site, we refer to um, some specific species that have come from, let's say, aquariums that have been uh, lost their their residents here into our wilds, like the red-eared slider turtle, the American bullfrog, which Steph uh, hinted at some amazing facts about it, the goldfish, Eurasian water milfoil, parrot feathers. So these are all hyperlinked. So you can just click on these to get into some detailed information on these aquatic invasives and uh, background information for you and your students. So it's like we were been talking about these action campaigns. We do um, integrate them into our uh, curriculum-based activities. And so under for youth, so we're thinking about our young people here, we're educating our young people. Here's a critic, the sort of the heart of our invasive wise education program is at for educators. So I'll bounce you into here. And this is uh, where you'll see uh, the icon to actually join our program where you can fill out your form and connect with me directly and we'll start our email and conversations, et cetera. But right here is where you'll, we have about, uh, 16 activities posted for now, more coming all the time. And you can actually search them by your grade level, um, let's say the curriculum subject you're interested in, arts, language, math and science, indoor, outdoor, whether you want it physical or not, we have them all searchable. And for example, right here is uh, the activity, play your part, don't let it lose school audit. So I'm gonna bring you into this activity. And uh, you can see this is the format for all our interactive activities. It gives you highlights, some key categories. And here's the, this description for don't let it loose. Is It's an audit that students can do of their school's class, pets, aquaria, plants, and create posters to share the don't let it loose message on how to be responsible pet, pet owners. So I'm gonna give you an example right now. A student created a wonderful poster for us here. Don't let it loose, you can see the impacts of throwing out the goldfish with the bath water. And there's the red ear slider turtle. We have some vegetation and she put in a really good message campaign here too. And, and um, we have in this activity, some messages that can go on communication posters like this. Like for example, you could encourage students to say, don't flush your goldfish. Cause how many of us really realize that, uh, that goldfish can survive our sewer system. So the, the kids might be interested in that. Um, so I'm just going to, while I have you on our activity page here, I'm going to breeze through to show you how the, what we include all this, it's quite comprehensive. So all our activities come with links, hyperlinks to similar activities or related activities, especially if you're doing lessons where you're, you're introducing invasive species and want to teach about them in different ways and use a tag game, for example, or other kind of artistic ways to dive into invasive species. We highlight some of the key inquiry questions, right? In our teaching these days is all about um, inspiring the questions. We have right here all the competencies and curriculum links that you need for your, your teaching planning for the year. So that's done for you right there. We list the materials you'll need. Many of our activities come with documents to download like this one um, as like a, a PDF files that you can just uh, print off and copy and hand out to your students. So this is a, for the school audit, we have a handy table made up for you. So 
students can go around and, and uh, check off the classrooms that might have different uh, forms of living creatures and examples of some of the key questions they could ask uh, teachers and staff about how they're going to responsibly look after these plants and animals during classroom breaks. So there's an example of a download that's just a, a click away. And like Steph was saying, we provide you with lots of background information on invasive species in general and specifics to let's say the, um, the, the type of species, the, the aquatics in this case. And we have a link here right to this greater document that's uh, really um, quite comprehensive and handy for you to have uh, as an educator on background to invasive species in general. We link you right back to that don't let it loose campaign page. So that's very uh, convenient. All the, all the activities have preparation tips and then the procedures to go about each of the kind of nitty gritties of the activity. Here we link you to another example of a poster and we've even listed some of those key messages about don't let it loose. And we encourage you also to share, especially um, anything to do with arts and crafts. We love to see what your students are producing. So we give you the, uh, the email address to share with us and that helps the conversation going and we can send you some more resources for more uh, more tips and tricks and things you can add to your invasive species education. And of course, we always add more links to some really um, good resources we can help you with. So that's, um, that's uh, an example of one of our uh, deep dive into one of our activities. We, and I'm going to actually show you a search here. I want a physical activity on aquatics. And so I'm going to go, I, I resorted the activity list and I'm going to go into turtle trouble, which is a uh, a really good quick physical activity in the classroom or in the gymnasium outside. And it's where students um, kind of role play, they become components of habitat. So like shelter, uh, food, water, space. And this might be familiar to some of you through a classic outdoor education game called Oh Deer, where you uh, students become, let's say a species like the uh, native Western painted turtle and they have to kind of fend off each other to find these habitat components. Um, and so we also then throw in this activity how you can um, change the population ebbs and flows when you introduce the red-eared slider turtle. And uh, there's ways how described about this extend into math and science. So it's, uh, it's a very simple, quick game, uh, gets people moving and demonstrates really well the, uh, the impacts to populations and habitat. Also, um, maybe I'll just go back to uh, all because I want to show you here too. Steph showed you uh, some parts of a great activity called Habitat Hit. And, um, and the images that she was showing to show, compare healthy uh, habitats to some unhealthy ones is right here. You can download those same images. Um, what's coming up here first is the descriptions. So each photo we give you a description for yourself as the educator, some background on the photo, and then a description that you can give to the students to sort of get them thinking about what, uh, what they're looking at and how to connect it or do the comparison, the image analysis that um, Steph was showing you. So I'm sorry, making you dizzy. I'm scrolling you down to show you here. There's that, that photo that we looked at earlier, the goldfish. So that's, uh, so that's handy for you in that Habitat Hit activity as well as stencils for doing the artistic part. So we uh, not only do we have these invasive wise education activities all linked and searchable, we also under for youth have oops, um, downloadable PDFs. So like some of those uh, coloring sheets. Well, there's our video superhero guy and he's uh, you can find play him again, but we have coloring books, quiz sheets, I'm scrolling down to show you quickly here that we have French um, booklets, publications that came to us from through the Canadian Invasive Species Council. So the one specifically for our waters, landscapes, and we just have single downloadable sheets here that are just great uh, desktop activities like solve the muscle maids. So um, that is very handy off our website too. And on uh, publications, so sorry, I'm thinking about publications, other downloadable files and things that you can print off and hand out is um, under our resources. So what's been here for a while now with the Invasive Species Council is our series of publications. Oh, and hello, red ear slider turtle is a great image uh, and place to get more information on this species. 
but our publications has a dedicated section for education. And uh, here we have uh, right at the top uh, ones related to our waters. So our French and English versions of uh, activity books. We have um, uh, another really good in-depth uh, printable guide to how to run um, or have a aquarium poster uh, activity for your class. Musical muscles, a version of musical chairs. But I want to just bring you into this excellent resource. I think it's one of the better ones that we have for uh, getting into aquatic invasives. It's a colorful 35 page uh, PDF uh, that gives you background and images on aquatic invasives, but mostly it gives you really in-depth desc um, descriptions of activities you can do. There's eight in total. And I'm gonna actually now get away from the screen, uh, well, virtually get away from the screen and give you a little demonstration of one of my favorites called Vectors of Spread. And I'm gonna show you something that you can do in front of your students and your students can take part of too about how easily um, invasive species can spread in our waterways and this one can be adapted for land like land uh, situations as well. So I'm just gonna actually stop sharing, unplug my ear. No? Oh, can hear you now. Okay, yeah. You're on me. Sorry. I have a dog barking in the background. So I thought I'd put my ear plug in. So I'm going to swing you guys around to the side of my desk. And I'll join you at the end of my desk here. And so what I have here for this demonstration of spreading of invasive species, I have two bodies of water. And this is going to be where we're going to mimic we're taking a bag of, of um, old herbs. I have some old sage, but this is turning into Eurasian milfoil, or maybe it could be the seeds of uh, the yellow flag iris, or maybe even the larval stage of the European green crab that's plankton that floats in our waterways for up to like three months. So I'm gonna spread my invasive milfoil into one body of water, stir that around. And then we can have our, students choose a watercraft of some sort. So if you want to go to the dollar store and buy plastic boats in the bath section, that's one option. But um, I wanted to avoid buying more plastic so you can either have a wood boat. I tried to make a boat out of bark, but that didn't really stand up to my clean, drain, dry aspect of this um, demonstration. So then you can bring in some recyclables um, water bottles, um, containers. So I'm going to choose, well, I think I'll choose this one. This could be uh, the paddle board. And I'm going to say it's a very nice day and I'm heading to the lake with my paddle boat. And I'm diving into this lovely stagnant water and looking at the vegetation, not knowing that it's a ridge of milfoil that has little fragments that are floating around. And because it's a long day in June, I'm gonna have time to head over to another body of water. So I'm gonna carry my paddleboard over to the next lake. And uh, there we go, I'll have a little spin around that lake. Now, can you perhaps see how much Eurasian milfoil has just transferred itself into that lake? So a really good impactful visual of the spread of invasive species. But it doesn't end here with our demonstration or our challenge for your students is we wanna then actually not have this happen so we're going to give them the tool to practice some clean, drain, dry. So first, maybe they might hose down their watercraft, okay? And we're going to drain it. We're going to hose the inside of it too. We're going to drain that all away. And we might actually get a brush out and brush off that invasive species. So there's another tool. And we'll dry. We can get them some claws out and other means to dry their watercraft. Now, if I had more room on the edge of my desk, I'd probably have a third body of water. And that would be the challenge part is to see how effectively they can clean off every piece of invasive species and dip it into a third body of water. Um, so there we go. There's something that you can do, your students can do, and we can even translate it to land species by thinking of seeds, for example, and trying to get seats out of the soles of our shoes and off the socks or woolly socks that we might walk through fields with. So there's my demonstration and I'll, uh, I'll take it, let you go over to Steph to wrap things up. That was great, Jen. I'm ready to go paddle boarding. Thank you. <laughs>
I think your your third try would have been great. Yeah. <laughs> Next time. Thing. Okay. Can you all see that now? Just have a couple last quick slides to share with you. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that also on our website, um, we have a really great spot where you can learn about how to report invasive species. There's some really quick tutorials, um, the apps that you can that you can use. Um, oh, I can't see my, um, how to advance it. Um, yeah, so you can download the apps, learn how to use them. And also, um, there we go. Yeah, and that's something that I can do as yeah. your education, as your facilitators help you um, learn about yeah. these types. Yeah, types yeah, Jen can help. That's great. Thanks, Jen. And and also, um, yeah, we just really encourage people to keep their eyes open when they're out and about and report things. It's how we can prevent the spread. Um, I'm just having trouble advancing. There we go. Okay. Um, another thing for older students or for stewardship groups, I just wanted to highlight is this adopt an aquatic habitat toolkit. So this is a really valuable tool for planning projects um, to set you up for success in your stewardship projects to um, with aquatic habitats. And also just wanted to let you know that we have a fabulous e-learning site. Um, the link is there. And we have a new course on European green crab, um, a community science program, um, identification of different species, and how to observe and report. These are, the majority are free. They don't take too long. They're visually beautiful. So highly recommended that you check those out. And once again, just we, we would love for, um, teachers in the group or if those of you who are connected to teachers to share this with them we we're really trying to grow our program and connect with as many classes around BC as possible and that's it we just wanted to thank you so much for coming and um, being part of our, our 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 workshop today and I'll stop sharing and um, open up the floor you're welcome to um, to ask questions, unmute, or um, anything you want to share, or feel free to also share in the chat. I have a question. Um, so I work with Burns Rock Conservation Society, and we're trying to design some community science projects for kids in schools and get them involved. And I'm wondering if there's any resources related more to the community science end of things, because these activities are super exciting. Um, yeah me to look at but I'm also wondering if there's stuff along those lines as well yeah that, that's a great question and that's so great that you're doing that um, so uh, we actually have a big community science program and uh, oh there we go Brittany's shared we have take action resources on our website so if you go to that e-learning site we have a whole community and also an, uh, there's a um, Britt did you share the link to the community science um, join the community science in the chat too there we go perfect and also we have um, a series of videos that are on our website in the e-learning um, sorry not videos e-learning courses three three modules um, for community science so getting involved with um, learning about invasive species why they matter preventing their spread and different actions people can take projects they can do um, yeah, that's, that's great. Thanks for that question. I might just add on there. Um, we're adding up those new, there's a 40 ways to take action. Um, and there's new resources that we've actually just been adding to the website today, uh, in that community science link. So, um, watch for a few more being added, but, uh, they take, um, take you through all the steps of say, planning a weed pull, creating posters, nature inventories, whole bunch of different community science uh, activities. Thank you so much. I'm gonna be doing lots of reading, I think. <laughs> Thanks, that's exciting. And another quick tip is, is uh, that May is Invasive Species Action Month. And this is a, a month that is proclaimed by the BC government every year. So our website's gonna have lots of links to different activities around the province, different ideas for how you could uh, engage uh, students or groups or, or whoever into different, uh, you know, weed pulls and community restoration products. So take a look uh, all through April for those things coming up in May. Does anyone Sue. have a, an invasive species in mind that's in, that they like to, uh, that's close to where they're, they're doing their education work that they like to get more involved with?
you can always yeah reflect on that and write us back i see a european oh, green crab yeah. note in the chat mm -hmm. we've got uh quite a bit of purple loose strife happening around one of our local lakes okay. and um i was hoping to be able to go out on the ice in the winter with the kids and snip the heads um but that never happened we did report it to uh observe report or whatever that thing is and it, nothing happened much i'm just wondering if you have any suggestions well, we certainly observe, follow, record, and report. Yeah, well, certainly we can follow up on like the, the specifics of the type of action that can happen. But that observe is actually still really useful, um, even though we don't might not get responses back. But we do have even a group within the Invasive Species Council who take that information and are are actually mapping it. And that is actually someone that I could connect with you to um, to, to talk to students directly to show the results or the impacts of doing that reporting through um, applications that we're encouraging, like the uh, iNaturalist. And, uh, and so maybe that would be one way to follow up on, on seeing uh, what the, what the observe and report can do, the benefits of it. I can speak to you further about that. Thank you. There's also a note about Himalayan balsam in the chat that's so hard to get rid of because of the seed dispersal. Um, it's such a good point, and it's, uh, it's it's one of those things that grows really well along riparian zones and uh, um, can really cause big erosion. On our website as well, we have, I mean, Jen, that was a fabulous tour of our website. I actually learned a few new shortcuts from you, so thanks for doing that. <laughs> but, there's a lot um, of potential there. There yeah. is, but uh, there's also, under the publications, there's a whole bunch of fact sheets about each specific species. So that's another place you could look for things like management techniques and, and strategies. Um, and also just ask us questions. We have uh, some really amazing plant and animal experts on staff that can also help you with um, uh, management and control. Well, folks, I don't see any more questions in the chat and we've just gone over a little bit of our 415. Um, really wanted to thank uh, Stephanie and Jen uh, for such a fabulous presentation. And also thank you for your great energy and passion that you, you bring to this topic, it's great. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed the webinar. Uh, please sign up for our Invasive Wise Education Program at uh, bcinvasives.ca slash education. Uh, and once again, May is Invasive Species Action Month. Take a look at that website for those kind of events and um, all the resources that are there. And um, as uh, Jen said, we also would love to invite you to join our community science network where you can learn, report and take action in your community. Everybody is welcome. And uh, Steph and Jen have put together a great sheet of all these links that they're gonna send to you uh, via email probably tomorrow. So, um, You'll, you'll be able to find all those things much easier than trying to grab them from the chat. Anyway, folks, thanks so much by, about, uh, for your interest and for attending today. Um, have a great rest of the afternoon and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks everybody.